Hi everybody, welcome back to MD Fly Fishing. This video was shot the same day as I did the Spanflex buzzer. Fish were showing all over the place. Rod was out and a fish would just cruise along from left to right, literally a foot out from you. Again, you'd be fishing from another position and it'd just come up on the right hand side, take a fly off the surface and drop back down again. And then again, another one would pass you two or three feet out. They were everywhere. So I started off on a washing line series of buzzers but they weren't taking it a duo they weren't taking it and then I managed to get a few on a single buzzer but the thing is I wasn't getting any quantity so I decided to go back to my old faithful fly some people don't call it a fly actually but it's a chamois worm about four inch in length on a ten hook with a bead in the middle to give it a little bit of weight and I fish it under a bung. At first I started fishing it about four foot down, below the fish that was on the surface, and I had quite a few takes. I also have a lot of missed takes as well, where the indicator will just bob down quickly and go. That's because of the length of the fly. You've got about three inch, three and a half inch of chamois leather along the hook length. But if a trout comes along, it's, necessar it's not necessarily going to grab it in the middle. It might nip it on the end, by the shank or I might nip it on the other end by the eye this will trigger your indicator to go down you strike into it and there's nothing there now I landed about 12 fish I must have missed at least just as many even more but very productive fly in fact Rick who was fishing off to my left He'd been fishing um, a squirmy worm, a white variant and a green variant, two and a half foot under an indicator. And he had about 30 odd fish on the upper and lower water. And he loved it. But that was the fly for the day for him. On conversation with him, he did say, well, on Wednesday we're here, it was all dry flies. Every day is different. But this day I went back to my old faithful fly and it produced. Later on in the afternoon, I was only fishing it about two and a half foot under an indicator. But it was a fly for me on the day. There's a little bit of waiting involved because once you do cast it out, leave it there. Just keep point of contact from the tip of your rod to the indicator. And try and keep the line as straight as possible or the shortest possible route. Because when you strike, you have to get direct contact onto that fly. If you've got a bow in your line and your leader underneath your indicator to your fly, it's slightly bowed off. It doesn't matter how far you drag your rod back, you're not going to make up that distance very quickly. So the most important thing here is keep the line as straight as possible from your rod tip to your indicator. So when you do make that strike, the effect is from the indicator to the fly. You're not just gathering up your fly line off the water i.e. that's bored off to a side I was going to cut this video right down but to show how it works I've put I believe 10 of the fish that I caught on this video 15 minutes long it's the longest one I've made usually I like to keep them nice and short to the point and get all the must shoulds and coulds about the information out there again this is how I fish it. Some people might fish it differently. I've actually fished this method once where I put a, probably a 10 foot leader on it. I think it was a dead calm day. I cast it out. I kept the line as straight as possible. And all I did is I just watched the end of the fly line for any type of movement. I also did this with a red squirmy worm once. And that was very productive as well. But you will remember when you do strike, it's worth taking one or two steps back as well. Because you've now got a 10 foot leader underneath the water. And if you've given it time for the fly, which is slightly weighted, to be directly beneath the end of your fly line, you've got to take up that distance pretty quickly. There is a video on it. I'll leave it in the description or I'll leave a link to it in the description. The other bad point about today is the net. I was using one of the fish I brought in was a, a nice blue probably five or six pound went absolutely mental in the net sometimes I shake the net forward to extend it and there's only a copper pin 
that holds a head to the handle and it's not beveled on either side like the end of a nail of any description no, to hold it in I think it's slotted in, tapped in it must have worked itself loose and after I'd finished with dis well, after I'd let that blue one go all these fish were returned I put the net on the bank again and the head just came off and I thought I don't believe this I'm only two hours, three hours into my fishing day and I've got no net. So I went around to see Steve in the hut to see if he'd got any uh, spare ones, but we temporarily fixed mine, which we were very grateful for. So thanks very much for that, Stephen. And I was able to carry on fishing. So anyone who's got a rover net, just check that linkage where you collapse your net down. Might be worth putting a bit of tape around it actually to hold it in place. That's a possible good idea. I've got a great big nail in mine, but I'm gonna have to treat myself to another one. These videos were taken at different parts of the day. First couple, of fish that I actually caught I only had it on the panoramic camera I wait until I get fish on a regular basis on a certain fly before I put the GoPro on because I only have about five hours worth of batteries in my pocket nothing worse than uh, setting it off and before you know it you've had two hours and three fish I'm talking gibberish now guys because I've never spoke 15 minutes straight on without having a lesson plan in front of me so any questions stick them in the comments very much appreciative for all the comments that people do put down i do emphasize this is my days out it gives you an idea how i fish my flies how i go about thinking what i'm going to use but it's no means a textbook on how to fish but i have had people come back to me and say fish them great and again some of the flies that i bought originally I've gone back to the people that made them for me and sent them videos and comments and reviews, honest reviews, to help them and say, you've done a good job, mate. So I'm out at another water next week with a friend of mine. Hope the weather's good. And I intend fishing some squirmy worms, probably green and white, on my next return to Pennine, which will be in a couple of weeks. And it's been nice receiving some emails as well. I got a very good one last week. From an individual who explained to me that uh, he'd been watching my channel and made a five hour round trip to Pennine and basically said I want to shake your hand thank you very much so he didn't say much more than that but he must have had a very enjoyable day it is a little bit pricey but if you go down south it's even pricier I've seen the there was one water I'm looking at not long ago and it's 150 pound for the day for three fish it was 190 odd pound for four so Pennine is a little gold mine if you want a big personal best. I get here at least twice a month as a little treat. But anyway, I'm gathering on too long here. This is our fisher. This is the fish I caught. It's a method that works. The only thing is on certain days, you might get them at two foot. You might get them at three foot, four foot, five foot, six foot. Trial and error. But they are there. They do like chamois worms. Some people say it's not a fly. Well, it, it's not a fly. An attractor, such as a number of other flies that people use to catch big fish. If you want to come to a water and fish a dry fly all the time and you walk away with two, then everybody to his own. But I want to come to a fishery, pay 30 odd quid and have a good day out. I will use anything in my box to catch fish. And on this day, I had 12 plus fish on a chamois worm. Must have had at least four. I think I had four and missed one on the Spamflex buzzer. But if I'd have been quicker and had a smaller chamois worm, I could have probably added another eight or nine fish to my total. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Leave a comment, leave a like, or if you don't like them, leave a dislike. I don't mind. It's my days out and I love them and I hope you love watching them. But anyway, thank you very much guys and ladies because a couple percent of my viewers are ladies and I will catch you on my next outing. Thanks very much for watching. Adios.